Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode, I think it's number four? Yep. Number four of these so. bad boys? Yeah, so. That's a month straight, that's crazy. Um, it, wasn't, really wasn't a, it really wasn't a month straight because we actually skipped a week in there after yeah. the very first one. That's but say, that's okay. Especially with my work schedule. Yeah, that's right. Nuts. Getting this to work out. Um, so, in case people wonder, we kind of record at weird times. It, it's always at night and it's always a random time during the week. We don't really know which day it'll be. There might be a chance, time that we end up recording back to back ones sometime. We you just you don't really know how things are going to work out because of his really crazy work schedule. Uh, um, but that's okay. So we are recording this episode, uh, I think, uh, four days before this podcast actually comes out. So some big news hits and we missed it. We're sorry. Um, but we did record this in time for today's very first topic we're going to talk about. The Nintendo Switch, yet again, no surprise. And we now know when they're going to have a big, massive E3-style event, although it's in Japan. Uh, it is happening on January 12th. They are re- unveiling price, uh, game lineup. Oh, man, I can't even remember. They might talk about specs. I'm not sure. It, a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to be like a normal, like if they had unveiled it at E3, like at a live event at E3, this this is kind of what this event's going to feel like. Um, they're inviting media and press to it, investors, uh, fans. Are, they're kind of making a huge, big deal out of it. And then a couple days after the fact, after that all happens, they're going to have an event in Japan where fans that are in Japan can go and play a Nintendo Switch. Uh, and then there's going to be a corresponding like media event in Europe and U.S. where media will get invites to go also go hands on with the Switch. Don't know about public stuff yet in the United States. Uh, if there is going to be something like that going on in our area, it'll be announced probably on January 12th. We do not have a time for this event yet. The, the time is going to be based on U.S. time, so it's going to be at a time that's probably convenient for most people. As in, it's going to be at like 1 o'clock in the middle of the day when everyone's working. That's just <laughs> what Nintendo does. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. It's my job. And if I happen to be working at my second job that day, it needs to say I'm going to be putting in a re- time request <laughs> off slip for that day. Um, anyways, so... Coming off of all the information we got on the Switch last week, there's a whole bunch of new rumors out there. I uh, don't really want to get into all of those rumors because it can get really crazy. Um, especially now that we know when we're going to get like hardcore facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you excited? Yeah. yeah. I, seeing the system just in the, the uh, ad that they put out made me excited. Um, so actually hearing what games will possibly come out with it or, you know, some maybe some of the specs, whatever else they have that's gonna be brought up in the in the uh, reveal thing uh, is actually just butter on the bread. Yeah. Um, so here's something that's really interesting because Nintendo just had an investors meeting. Um, you know, and they were profitable, no surprise. But they, mostly thanks to Pokemon Go and their sale of the Seattle Mariners. For six hundred million or something, yeah, they sold them. Nintendo had owned them. Yeah, (laughs) see, this is what happens. And the thing is, he's a baseball fan. He didn't know this. Like that's weird. Interesting. Um, Yeah, Seattle Mariners owned like a majority stake of the Seattle Mariners. Yeah, Nintendo did. Yeah, that's why. Like, if you ever, you obviously have a Nintendo stadium. If you go, they had there was like Nintendo branding everywhere. Mario was at every game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So they sold all of their stake except for ten percent, I believe it was. Um, to the already existing owners, like, on the whole board. Um, so that sale was obviously to coincide with the fact that this quarter wasn't going to look very pretty because there was hardly any games released for 3DS or for Wii U. Uh, plus, with the Switch announcement, that's going to really potentially kill sales. They really knew it wasn't going to be a very profitable quarter, so they kind of helped boost things. Obviously, Pokemon Go did really well mm-hmm. as well. But, um, yeah, so... Um, but this... This bit of news kind of came out of out of that, and this is important because it offers a, a couple talking points that we could find out on January twelfth. Um, for so, the Nintendo Switch. Let me just get the exact words here. Um, what we saw in that trailer is going to be the core of the system. So the dock and the Joy Cons, the Pro Controller, and the actual screen that is the system itself. That's the what, what Nintendo is calling the core of what the Switch is. So. If you are doing anything with Nintendo Switch, you're going to have that, period, end of story. And that basically means that all games 
ever made for this particular platform will always keep in mind that everyone may only have this. And that's it. So all games made are always going to work no matter what on what you get out of the box. However, here is what uh, Tatsumi Kimishima said, who is the current president of Nintendo Japan and CEO of Nintendo Japan. Basically, that means you're in charge of Nintendo. Because <laughs> um, yeah. Japan is like, that's where Nintendo is. So, um, so he said that'll be the core. The notes that there will be add-ons for the Switch. No surprise, there always seems to be accessories yeah. for things. Yeah. Um, and that we will reveal more details about that development on January 13th. I'm assuming that since it, since it's going off U.S. time, it might be January 13th in Japan mm-hmm. when the yeah. event happens, yep. but it's January 12th that's here. That's what it looked yeah. like when yeah. I that, that That's what it looks like. Because we don't know the exact time, but that kind of gives you a time frame where it's going to be 12th year or 13th there. Um, so here's what he said. So it may be appropriate to call whatever these extra things are going to be accessories, or it might be better to call them add-on hardware. Interesting. Okay. It's probably more correct to call them accessories, and you can assume that there will be a wider array, which I assume means a wider variety than what we've seen before. Um, so just start, starting with that point, this is a theory I, I've had myself, that those Joy-Con controllers that slide off, having different ones at retail that have D-pads on them, have the control stick flipped up to the top, mm-hmm. Um, just have like different control function. You know, maybe they release one where the sticks are switched completely the opposite way for left-handed players because they yeah. u- use the right-hand yeah. stick mainly. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of those things where I think that's like a natural thing they're going to do, and, and that yeah. could be what they mean by accessories. Yeah. Um, but that add-on hardware statement mm-hmm. that has people thinking that that might be the core unit, but in the future they could release like a dock that has more power and does 4K gaming when yeah. you're at home. Fantastic. Like, <laughs> like the idea because there was a to kind of give some background on that whole concept. There was a patent, I believe it was released last year for Nintendo platforms. Granted, Nintendo patents a whole bunch of stuff. They don't use most of it. Um, there's actually a, there's infamously a patent out there for like an inflatable like Mario Kart eight thing that you sit in and play Mario Kart <laughs> in for the week. It never yes. it never came out. Why not? Come it on, Nintendo, never came bring out. it out. Yeah, that that, that this that would be get awesome. your priority straight. Yeah. <laughs> But no, um, so uh, in this patent, it showed where Nintendo's hardware would basically get better by having attachable separate hardware units you could buy and kind of plug into the main system, and it would have more GPU and mm-hmm. more CPU processing power. Mm-hmm. Now, that was just an idea. People thought, oh, maybe this would be like, uh, um, what, are the, what do they call those? We have um, different devices that upgrade really quickly. Oh, man. Oh. I know there's a name for yeah, it. Yeah, I can't yeah, think. Yeah. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. What does it call? Modular. Okay. A modular console. Yep. Uh, so where you get like a base unit, oh, but then you can modularly basically. upgrade it depending oh, on what yeah. you want to do. So you don't have a 4K TV. You might not care about something that upreses things to 4K, right. um, but you might care about something that gives more FPS. So then you might go get the CPU modular that's going to give you higher frame rate, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of uh, what I'm thinking when I see add-on hardware, man. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Okay, other systems, I mean, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are basically releasing mid-generation upgrade consoles where you buy an entirely new system. Mm-hmm. This would allow Nintendo to release mid-generation upgrades that don't require necessarily getting a whole new system. It would just be like a little part that could be like 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That? Yeah. Like, poof. Right. People are worried, oh, it's not going to be powerful. It's, it's going to fall behind when the Scorpio comes up. It might not matter. They could yeah. just be like, hey, look, for $100 extra, dollars, you can get Scorpio power if you really want. Pretty much, yeah, right? That'd be fantastic. Um, obviously, this is all speculative. Right. But, like, what kind of accessories or hardware would you like to see hmm. for, for that unit, the Switch? We know what it is, but, right. yeah. like, is there anything that you could like, man, this makes a lot of sense if they had this with it or you add this to it? Not any that I can think of right off the top of my head, but, I mean, you made some really good things with the, the left-handed people, you know, just actually catering to people who have... I'm not saying left-handed people are disabled. No. But no. Catering to actually, like, everybody. So, like, you can give disabled gamers some uh, joy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, if you have someone who's only got, like, one hand use, yeah. you could try to make it everything almost playable with one hand. One hand. Or even if they even if it's just they have to use the, the tap the stick with the tap, I mean, if they can... It could also stand. be one of those things where you could buy one of those joypad things that's basically a Wiimote. 
Yeah, for people who can only use one hand, yep. you can kind of do some of the touch gains maybe with just a Wiimote. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's rumors that there's an IR sensor in one of them anyways, but again, it might not be as accurate as like a full gyroscope kind of thing going on, um, gyro sensor, and that could be something they, they put in one of their add-ons. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, there's a lot of possibilities out there for this kind of this kind of thing. Yeah. Like My mind is just yeah. racing on what yeah. Nintendo could do with it. Anyways, so the next part that he kind of talks about here, and this has some people kind of excited too, is he goes on, uh, Tatsumi Kimishima goes on to say, we are interested in VR. Ah. VR offers new ways of playing, mm-hmm. but that depends on what kind of software can be played. If you ask us whether there are any possibilities, we can't say no. It may be that we will build VR software titles. I think that opportunity is available to us. So, like, yeah. The only thing I could think of, um, if they don't plan to put VR eventually with this system, is, like, the Samsung Gear headsets. Yep. Yep. I mean, I, I know anyone who's used those and used, like, real VR knows that, like, it's not the same thing. It's just not. But um, it kind of gives a consumer-ready, like piece of it they're not going to put it on playstation so the playstation vr you guys can forget that nintendo's not going to make games for that yeah. um they're probably not going to make pc so you can pretty much rule out the htc vive and the oculus rift like those are the two yeah. big pc ones yeah. nintendo's probably not doing that mobile they are making mobile games so you can see yeah. them explore that um you can also see them come up with their own vr headset yeah yeah um, that'd be cool this is like a complete 180 because Nintendo, for like the last year, the year like Miyamoto would go try the VR at E3 and be like, that's just not there. It's not ready. And now here's the president of Nintendo being like, hey, we might do it. Yeah. It, it, there's so many possibilities. With, it, Nintendo games, like their, their core games, lend themselves so well to VR. I mean, just think of yourself as Link or as Mario. Running around, slashing, doing all these different things, jumping, but Goomba jump. stomping, <laughs> bringing it back to last week. Oh Goomba my gosh! Stomping. I mean, <sighs> two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, it, it's just I don't know. It. I just I don't think VR is ready. It, that that might be true. Um, but you know what I'm saying though. When I, no, when I, I know the, the the games lend themselves to work really well uh, with I, I guess I'm one of those people like I'm kind of anti-VR uh, mm-hmm. I don't like it I think it has some cool ideas mm-hmm. um, that go into it that are really immersive I don't see myself really sitting down for an hour using VR because you can't sit down for starters you have to yeah. stand up yeah. you have to move around and like when I play video games it's like a relaxing time for me and now you're like basically telling me it's a workout every time yeah. and I mean that's fine that's good Get, I'm not saying there can't be like it well, would be great for like Pokemon a Wii Go. Fit or you know, Pokemon I mean, Go like, like, was... there are examples I mean Pokemon Go you've heard of me walking oh. around with a headset on well right no, but, <laughs> but that's that's a yeah. game that you play as you're walking around I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's similar to that where I mean well that's more of a social and, game yeah true. when you're playing VR yeah. like it's a very much an individual experience right um, I mean it's yeah there are multiplayer games obviously but yeah it's still one of those that I guess I just never really liked VR for most of the things that I see it being used. Like you talk about like Zelda, like being first person like a slasher. So like I don't want to do that. No. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's it's it's. And the funny thing is, I love Skyward Sword and Skyward Sword. You are slashing your Wiimote, and I love that. But I also not like captured in this world mm-hmm. where I cut everything out. And I know some people want that complete immersion. I get yeah. that. Just I don't like that. I guess. No, and to each their own, and maybe yeah. maybe it, maybe it's just that you haven't found a game that you liked yet, and it's a there's experience that I like. Like yeah. there is one VR game I played a, this was a long time ago. Remember Crimson Skies? Oh yeah, cool. that game is amazing, awesome. yeah. amazing. They need to like remaster that, and, right? Or yeah. release another one. So, anyways, so I was in this thing at uh, arcade or whatever that you put on this VR headset, so you're mm-hmm. you're in this VR world and you're in like this giant cockpit thing and you look down and all the controls you see when you're looking in this virtual space are exactly what you can feel and it's like you're flying an actual mm-hmm. fighter jet. Yeah. And that was really, really cool. Yeah. That's, like, that's like a $3,000 plus setup at oh, right. least yeah. for me to really feel yeah. like it. Like if I'm in a VR space at home, and I, one, you got to have a lot of room. So mm-hmm. like this room here, I have to take the couches out and set up cameras yeah. and if you want like a real good VR experience. And none of it really feels real. like, oh, yeah, you're holding, like, even the vibe. You're holding these really cool motion controllers. And using, like, a gun, it doesn't feel like I'm holding a gun. Yeah. Like, like well, the big thing with me with VR is that it doesn't feel Natural. real yeah. as it should. should. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. like when I was in that cockpit thing, that felt real. When I, when we were on that one thing I used to have at the fair that one year where they had the roller coaster. Yeah. 
um, thing, uh, and it was all virtual. Like that, that felt kind of real. I mean, you knew in the back of your mind that oh, I'm not really on a real roller coaster, right. but it felt like you were on a real roller coaster. And and when when I play VR games, like there's some cool experience. Oh, I'm climbing, I'm climbing, but I'm holding on to these things that don't feel like I'm holding on to rocks. Like yeah. it, it just yeah. the full experience of being in a virtual world doesn't feel the same. It just feels like I'm still using Wiimotes. I'm still pressing buttons. Yeah. I can see that. I don't see – it's just all, – all that hap- all that's different is the screen is wrapped around my head now instead of being, you know, 10 feet in front of me or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't – I don't know. Like, I, I've done some VR stuff. It's really cool. There's some cool ideas. It just doesn't it, – it doesn't really tickle my fancy. Yeah. Um, the thing is, like, this is the biggest push for VR there's ever been. Uh, someone – I was listening to, a, uh, I think, uh, the Total Biscuit the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was talking about something with VR. And he's like, you want to know how big VR is? Like, I went to my grocery store to pick something up today, and there was, like, a knockoff of VR at the grocery store you could buy. And I'm just like, wow. Like, okay, this is literally the biggest push for VR there's ever been. You have knockoffs coming out for it. Yeah. Um, when I'm assuming the knockoffs is something you slide your phone in or whatever. Yeah. But still, it's just one of those, I, I guess I'm not sold on VR. I'm glad Nintendo is exploring it because, hey, if it takes off, I could be wrong. Everyone could love it. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean that you guys it's, don't like it. That's right. Um, yeah. That he's not going to like yeah. it. You know, it, it's... You know, a lot of people didn't like the Wii. I love the Wii. A lot of pe- there's some people that don't really like what the Switch is doing right now. I like it. Yeah. It, it, like there's difference in taste and difference in gaming. And I, one thing I will say about Nintendo that I like is they offer that they usually offer something different than what we're getting elsewhere. Yeah. The Switch is a totally different thing than yeah, we're getting from definitely. Sony and Microsoft right yeah. now. Um, and VR isn't necessarily different from what Sony's doing per se. Yeah. But then again, we don't really know how they would implement VR if they do it. Um, I guess some of the said I just don't. Yeah, it, yeah. It's just there are situations I like about it, but no one can realistically afford those situations. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, I think it's more like a novelty, like three D TV to me. Yeah, it's yeah, it's true. neat in certain yeah. situations, but I don't, it's not really essential. I don't need yeah. it. It doesn't really make me feel any better. Like Avatar, awesome in three D. Mm-hmm. I don't really feel like it makes the movie any better. Right. Yeah. There's that. I just think it'd be kind of cool to be like actually immersed in the world and be able to. Like run around and oh, you know, I, I totally get that appeal. But it's just like to me, I'm like, okay, you're running, but like if you run just out of sight of one of the cameras, everything yeah. gets off, or yeah. you know, you yeah. bump into my coffee table. You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of like it just doesn't virtual reality. I get it, it's virtual. It's not supposed to be real life, but like yeah. the things in real life kind of ruin my virtual experience. Right. Yeah. And it feels like for me to have an ideal thing, I need a warehouse that's set up with cameras and nothing in it where I can just yeah. run around. Right. That'd be. Ooh, that'd be fun. Like, <laughs> and even when I duck behind cover and I'm looking out to like shoot someone, like, okay, I need something to grab onto that's going to feel yeah. like that wall. And yeah. at that point, it's not really virtual reality that I'm, as I'm asking for. It's almost yeah. like I'm asking for reality yeah. um, that becomes virtual. Almost like, almost like say one of those uh, laser tag, yeah, like, like things. Yeah. Where if they had that for like a shooting game, but like instead when you put on the headset, like all the textures change and everything changes up, but like everything's still in the same location. So yeah. like it feels real, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. Like I could see it as a way to like really make. Laser tag would be freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how many cameras they'd have to have to make that work on all those corners. <laughs> right, yeah. But it, it's just one of those things where I guess I just see it as a novelty rather yeah. than something that really should be a future direction for gaming. But <laughs> I'm sure I'm in the minority on this. Yeah. It's kind of like that one uh, uh, that, that one movie where the kid writes a blank check and writes himself a million dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets the castle. Yeah. And he's got that VR headset thing going on with this big crazy ball thing that that seems more realistic for gaming. But then, uh, for some reason, he has, like, 35 TVs and making, like, a 100-foot big <laughs> TV wall when he can't even look at it because he's wearing a headset. Like, what is yeah. the point of that? Yeah. I think I think that was so... Because I think, if I remember right, that was... Just to show that... No, okay. that was at the castle. He bought. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. remember so he bought it off the castle. Just to show other people yeah. what he was seeing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, either, yeah, either way, it's just. I mean, there's cool things in that movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to have a water slide out of my room, <laughs> right. down to the pool. That'd be awesome. Right. Um, but still, it, it's just. I don't know. I guess I'm. I'm yeah. off the VR bandwagon until. Until something. It proves to me, I guess. Yeah. Right now, I feel there's a lot of neat concepts, but like, mm-hmm. none of it feels like it feels like a complete experience right. to me. Okay. Here I'm using that experience word. Yeah. Right. Right. But you. You like VR. Yeah. I, so, I, you know, to be completely honest, I don't think I've ever really done much for VR, but just the concept of it, to me, seems like it's awesome. So, I mean, like I said, I haven't done, like, really anything at all with VR, but... Do you have the gear headset? I do, but it's still in the box and <laughs> has never been opened. <laughs> um, yeah. See, you can go get some VR experience right now. Yeah, yeah, right. See, I think, um, personally... 
things like what Pokemon Go are doing is more exciting to me. Right. Augmented yeah. reality. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. And unfortunately, like you're not gonna get that from virtual reality. You're not gonna walk around with this giant thing on your head and look at the real world and see stuff. Like that's just not let's be real. People are gonna walk around like that. You're gonna look like an idiot. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. But not, not necessarily. What, well, if everybody's doing it. Not, not necessarily. If you can combine the technology of Google Glass well, yeah, and but make that, it look like actual glasses instead of, like, maybe. you know, full-on headset. Yeah, but then people are going to start getting arrested because, oh, you're wearing Google Glasses when you're driving. No, I mean, yeah, there's that, but... It, it, well, it, improves, it improves my nighttime driving. It's putting a clear line on the road. Yeah, it, actually, <laughs> theoretically, you could use that as a... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, app idea, app idea, <laughs> app idea. We need to get our hands on Google Glass and get right. this work. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I guess I just don't think it's there. You're excited by the possibilities. Um, I kind of am waiting for this whole VR thing to go out so we can yeah. stop talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Like 3D TVs, like yeah. you don't really, no one really talks about them anymore. Yeah, no. Like I'm kind of waiting for it to get to the period where, like, okay, yeah, we got over the hype phase and now yeah. it's an. It's just VR has tried this before. It's tried just, making pushes before. Yeah, I'm just kind of more of the. The concept of it, it, it intrigues me. You know the concept that intrigues me? Hmm. Holding a controller, playing some Zelda on my couch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Like, that That excites me. Like, putting on a headset, like, I don't know. Maybe if I was a kid, maybe it'd be different. Like, I remember losing myself in games when I was a kid. Maybe it'd be cool if I could literally lose myself. Of course, then I see my parents yelling at me even more because I can't hide the fact I'm playing games. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyways. Uh, well, I actually had a really strange idea on the way over here. Um, a bodysuit. That actually, like, if you're playing, like, Madden or something, and you get hit by a linebacker, it, like, hits you oh. where you get hit. Oh, people would totally change. They'd be like, I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to get hit. I don't want to get hit. They're just we keep throwing it on the side. They keep throwing it yep. on the side. They keep throwing it on the side. Oh, I got hit. But, it's a penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but that could be one way to make it, like, a... Uh, augmented reality type thing where if you get hit by something you actually crank up the settings oh yeah yeah. boy you just got hit stick cracked ribs and everything else yeah (laughs) out for three weeks yourself um so that guy's leg broke mine just tried to (laughs) (laughs) um so uh also uh during this little bit uh kimishima also said in terms of now this is where he's talking about sales of the unit at launch um about sort of how many units of the switch we will sell we're looking at Past examples from competitors, as long as, our, and including ourselves, like with the Wii, he brings up specifically, which that's crazy if they're looking at the Wii. Because, um, like, that's like their best selling home console of all time. That's mm-hmm. pretty nuts. Uh, and he said it had a lot of momentum, and that means the first year after it goes on sale will be extremely important. And I think that's, that, that, that's true. Basically, if your product doesn't have a good first year, it's dead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I know there's another report where he says like they're planning to have two million units ready to sell in that first month um, worldwide. And some people are like, oh, that's not enough. I'm like, what? that's it, it, it might be conservative, so it might be really hard to get it at launch. But I mean, I'd rather it be hard to get than go and see it's just flooded all over store. Sh- I know, I see yeah. flooded all over store shelves, and you're just like, okay, no one's buying this thing. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Um, I gotta stop looking at this. Yeah, I know. So. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm happy that they're really emphasizing that first year. Now, yeah. I'm hoping that means it's yeah. not one year and then they have nothing. Right. Um, yeah. But, yeah. like, Cause if you they just, nailed it with Wii. They really yeah. did. Like, that first year was awesome. You had Mario Galaxy and Smash Bros. Um, and I'm trying to even make, well, I'll say that Twilight Princess and Wii Sports at launch. I think Wii Fit came out in that first year. Like, they kept hitting consistently with the audiences that they originally hit. Um, with core games and casual games, and it just blew up, and then it had a nice three-year run before it started trickling off. Um, and I hope that's well, more than a three-year run, but still, it, it's... I mean, nowadays, that's not... That's not terrible. No, it's not at all. Not for consoles. Like, it, it, it's really... I mean, look at this. We're in 2016, and the PlayStation 4 released in 2013, and now they're releasing the PlayStation 4 Pro this year. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying sales are necessarily dwindling, but they did fall behind the Xbox One S, so it's one yeah. of those... Yeah, you know, it, you're kind of hitting that point you're, where people are kind of like, okay, we're kind of ready for something more. And I know console gamers are like, no, I want it to be like last generation. You buy yeah. one system and it works for eight years. Yeah, well, technology moves a lot faster oh, than yeah. that. That last yeah. generation honestly should have stopped a lot sooner. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised it didn't. But yeah, you're looking at a shelf life. It was like it was getting to the point where for... smartphones were almost as powerful as a 360 yeah. before the uh, before the Xbox One came out, and it's like. Yeah. We were really on the market a long time if yeah. that's happening. I mean, you're looking at a lifespan now of, like, at most five years. 
Uh, well, and that's what motorcycles were years. before last generation. It was like yeah. five years new new system. Yeah. Five years new system. Yeah. It, at most five. They are probably pushing more down to three, but so we're kind of changing things up with the podcast. Um, from here on, moving forward, we're going to have everyone on the cast kind of bring their own topics in the conversation, so I don't talk the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's just me and Eric this week again. Yeah. No Darren. He just couldn't make it. So Eric. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I actually do have one more thing with the Switch that sure, does sure, kind of sure. concern me. Um, with the detachable controllers, I noticed how they come off the top. Yep. I'm wondering how like the release mechanism of that's going to be. Because if I'm holding my controller in my hands and I accidentally hit that release mechanism, if that thing falls, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, yeah, and, and, no, and we don't know what the release mechanism is because no one's talking about well, it. Well, right, um, but... Don't know if it's like a button you hit on the back. Right. Or if, maybe it's all magnet stuff and you just pull them off. I have no idea. Yeah, but I don't. I would rather, much rather see them come from the bottom up where if I accidentally hit a release button, I have to physically pull it off. Well, and that, that's not always true, though. Sometimes people are holding it like this. Yeah. And, you know, sitting down looking down, it can just release and fall slide right off the lap. Yeah, I mean, there, I know, I know. Like you're thinking, like holding like this, but I don't know yeah. how many people actually hold it like this. Well, I mean, even like, if you're, even if you're like here, I, there's not a lot of people that are going to be holding it like almost. But then again, down. what happens when you put it on the dock, though? You got to take almost take off the pads before you dock but it. But from what it looks like, a lot of the things that I've seen with the pictures with the dock, they pretty much have them off, anyways. Well, no, what hap- what's happening is people are going like this. They're setting it in, and then they're pulling the things up. And off. Yeah, true. So, like, yeah. like I'm saying I'm setting it right here on this counter. I can't go down with them. Yeah. I'd have to take the whole unit yeah. off, take off each one, and then set it in there. Yeah. Get my fingers all over the screen. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, but... Like, I think that's why they do it from the top, because it makes yeah. more sense with the dock. Right. But you um, see my concern, though. But, yeah, it, it's one of those... Um, We'll see. We gotta get in our hands. Oh right, yeah. Like we exactly. don't really know. Um, that's just a. We don't know what the mechanism. Right they, now, and, right. and, and maybe it's a concern they ha- already have addressed. We have no mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. So uh, we, what else do you want to talk about? Um. Let's see. I think the first one that I want to talk about is the uh, mini NES. Because yes, the mini NES, aka the NES Classic Edition. Um, a lot of people just call it NES Mini. It doesn't really matter what you want to call it. It comes out next month. Yep. November 11th, 11th and, then, and, and, and 10th, yeah, and 10th is like Japan, and it yep. might even be Europe Australia. and Australia. Or nope, Australia and Japan are the 10th, and then EU and NA are the 11th. Okay, so. All, right, all right, so there you go. Um, by the way, highly pre-ordered. So, yeah. what, so this is like one of the first times he's found out about this. Um, I've, I've covered it. Zelda Informer already before, so I kind of get the gist of it and all this stuff. Why do you want to talk about it? What's up? Um, just, this was, like, my prime of gaming, and just the nostalgia factor of it, and the games that they have on it, blows my mind, and <laughs> is, seems like it's gonna be freaking what, fantastic. Uh, what, what games excite you on that bad boy? Oh, I mean, Balloon Fight's on there, mm-hmm. Donkey Kong, Excite Bite, Dr. Mario, Tecmo Bowl, at least on... NA systems. Yep. yep. Um, you got your Super Mario. I mean, you name it. It's the thirty games are just crazy good. So you think it's incredible value? Yeah. Yeah, I do. So, I do. so, so all those games are worth at least two bucks to you? Oh, easily. Even if you already own them? Yeah. Yeah, easily. Especially okay. considering that it's. Uh, is it updated graphics? Because um, it's HDMI out. But, HDMI but, out. It doesn't have CRT scan mode. Um, I don't. I want to say it's not up. It might be like a 720p yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still going to be the 8-bit graphic, but, well, yeah, you know, yeah. just the yeah, it, it might It might actually be like a higher quality. Yeah. yeah. I'm at 100% right. for sure. I can't yeah. off the top of my head. But, and it is dinky, guys. You yeah. can hold it in your hand. Yeah. See Skull Kid? Yeah. That's how big the that is. Many, like, yeah. you, there's, like, videos of it all. The thing is tiny. Yeah. Then. But, again, it's basically a storage device that has an NES in it. But, I mean, you, you think about it, some of these games are way worth probably even more than what the system itself is. Well, a lot of these actual... games, if you go on 3DS and Wii U to buy them off the Virtual Console, they're like five bucks or more per yeah. game. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, in actual NES cartridge form, some of these might be even worth... Well, not Mario. Well, Mario, Mario yeah, obviously, like probably, that one's... They'll give you that for free. Well, Especially if it's know. Mario Duck Hunt. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, and I mean, some of these might actually be worth quite a bit. 
Some of them, yeah. Um, I believe uh, was uh, the Earthbound series on there. Uh, Mother, it might be, I can't remember if they're calling it Mother Earthbound. I don't see it, but uh, Kid Icarus, Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream, Star Tropics. Um, I don't see it. Go up, Final is, Fantasy. That, that's awesome. That that's on there. Go up. That's uh, yeah. This is the. Um, it's got Excite Bike. Oh, Excite Bike. Yeah, right. Yeah, Ice, I, Climbers. I, Ice Climbers, which is really Kirby's Adventure. Heck yeah. Um, Mega Man 2, yes! Yes, Mega Man 2 is like the best intro music of all the Mega Mans. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Mega, Mega, Mega Man. Sorry, I, I have like uh, the one guy that, that does the video game version, like oh. uh, video game songs with lyrics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Brental yeah. Floss, Brental Floss. Yeah. And he, he did one for Mega Man 2 like years ago. It's just awesome. Um, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, Bubble Bubble. One of my favorite games of all time. So 60 bucks, HDMI yeah. out. I think it comes with two controllers. Um, it does not use the old school NES controllers. I mean, the yeah, controllers well, are basically NES controllers, they, but they're they, not. They have a new connection. You know, right, new connection, but they are they designed the exact same way. Yeah. I think the specs are exactly the same yeah, except pro- yeah. for the, the input. Yeah. So, <sighs> actually, the controllers might actually be bigger than the system itself. So, so this system, yeah, they might be. This system reminds me, um, and I said this back when we were talking about a Zelda Informer, uh, of things that already exist out there, like um, they don't call them like mini editions, but there's like the classic like little Atari you can buy that's mm-hmm. got sixty things you just yep. plug into your TV and play. Yeah. Um, I remember my dad growing up, he bought me like this little joystick thing that had you know a video and audio out that you hook into mm-hmm. the back of your TV and you could play like Dig Dug and uh, Pac Man and you know a bunch of other games yeah. that weren't necessarily exclusive to any platform. That's why right. they're able to offer it in that package. Yeah. Um, I one of my Roommates had a like an N sixty four controller that he had. Oh yeah, that yeah. could do something like that. That, do, that had a couple of games on it. Yeah, uh, so that's what this kind of reminds me of. Yeah. Now, explain to me why compared to all this stuff that already exists, why does this particular one excite? Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Yeah. Okay. It, it By the way, nostalgia is not a bad thing. Internet, you're wrong. Yeah. Stop being like, oh, you just like it because of nostalgia. So what? Yeah. Right. That's good. It brings back fantastic memories. <laughs> that's like that's a, a highly positive thing. Yeah. Um. Oh, highly positive thing. Even if it makes you think negative of things today, like whatever, that's a totally separate issue. Nostalgia yeah. no, is good. No, no, no. I am not saying that this is going to be anything better than anything. Well, here's the thing: like pre-orders but, for this are sold out. Yeah. Like so, I don't know how now that that doesn't. Maybe they just didn't make enough of them. I have no idea. But yeah. People so want this or, thing. Either that or people. Some people can't understand really the appeal. It. I I look at it as it's sixty bucks for thirty of the best games ever released on NES. That you can do it in modern HDMI outputs. If you're a streamer, this is awesome for you. Mm-hmm. You don't have to use emulators. Yep. Uh, you don't have to, you know, if you want higher resolution, you basically have to use emulators. Or you don't have to buy complicated equipment to convert older older signals and have videos up that aren't as good a quality. Uh, it, it's And it's also one of those things where the NES always looked better on a CRT TV than on an HD TV. This kind of eliminates that gap. Yep. Um, I see it as exciting. I can also see why people don't really get the big deal out of it. Yeah. Um, especially if you already own the games. It's like, okay, I already own these. I already bought them on Virtual Console. Why does it really matter outside of the fact that now I feel like I spent all this money on all these games on Virtual Console that I could have just spent 60 bucks on this thing Yeah. Um, and got it a lot that cheaper. From, but... um, the, the only thing I... Like, I'm trying to think of, of any sort of negative. It, it's hard because it's just an option. You don't have to buy the thing. Right. Um, me, personally... My interest in it isn't for myself, even though I'm sure I'll play it. Um, my interest is for my kids. Yeah. They're just getting into gaming. Yep. Gamepad's too big. The yeah. oh, yeah. pro controller is oh, yeah. too complicated for oh, them. Yeah. Um, they play on iPads and stuff. They understand touch. Mm-hmm. And to get them into gaming with buttons, to see how much better gaming with buttons is, they need something simple. Yep. And yep. while the Wii was simple, the Wii was trying to use motion controls. Right. This Hip, is right. literally what I grew up on. At, at my daughter's age of five, I was playing an NES. Yeah. I was five, yep. playing Punch-Out. Yep. Like, this is what I played. Mm-hmm. So this is a good way to kind of get them in. Now, are the games more difficult? Yeah, are you going to die a lot? Sure. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing. It makes them realize that just, you know, like, I'm not saying phone games are bad. They're not. There's some yeah. awesome phone right. games oh, out yeah. there. But it, it's one of those where this kind of introduces them into Nintendo, into what I grew up with. Yep. And maybe, possibly, like, there's Zelda. I think both Zelda games are on there. Yep. Can get them into Zelda. And, mm-hmm. and they might even want to play, oh, okay, well, this is what this is what the original Zelda was like. Cool, you're playing Breath of the Wild. Let me try that out. Yeah. Um, 
I think it's a great introductory console for kids. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's really where this, I mean, I know there's a lot of like, oh, Nintendo fans, like, you're all nostalgic, you want it because of nostalgia, mm-hmm. and because HDMI and all, all yeah. these great games for cheap, yeah. but it's like, man, my kids can, yeah. can almost grow up like I yeah. did. That's what I like about it. <laughs> Another thing is, is you can always tuck your, your actual NES away now. <laughs> and, and <laughs> well, if, if these are the only games you care about. Right. That that's true. That is true. Um, oh, another big feature of this, you might not know this, it has save states. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's kind that. of that's kind of a big deal. Uh, this is what makes it important for the speedrunning and the uh, streamer community because you're not limited by the save files that you were on the original one where you had to save and it would always be like at the beginning of a dungeon or mm-hmm. like you could save anywhere you want and re- restart yada yada yada. So yeah. that's it's just really cool. It's kind of part of modern emulator gaming and it's now it's part of this. Not part of modern gaming. Yeah. There is no save state. And like this might maybe. Switch offering save states. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See what you're doing, Nintendo. You're <laughs> seeing how the market takes it. Yeah. Um, awesome. So uh, the other topic I want to talk about, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Mm-hmm. Now, neither of us have played the demo. No. Which apparently has been downloaded 3.5 million mm-hmm. times. Yeah. Oh. yeah. World record for... That's got to like as many people as bought Splatoon, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a world record for demo downloads. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and so I'm probably sometime here going to download the demo because I, I, I've i been kind of on the fence about Pokemon Sun and Moon because I, I haven't really been into recent Pokemon games. Right. Is this really a good one to start getting back into the series with? And from everything I've seen and everything I've covered like at Nintendo Prime, it's almost like almost like rebooting the series. It's like a really fresh take on everything, it feels like, okay. from what I'm seeing. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I want to I want to pick up the demo now, I think, because I think I want to give it a try. See if it's something yeah. that I think is worth it. You know, I buy one version, you buy the other version, right. and then yeah. we, so we can get all yeah. the Pokemon right. or whatever. Yeah. We, you know, whatever. Anyways, that, that's kind of th- kind of think of. So that's why we, we gotta get the demo tried out so we can actually give some nice opinions on, on yeah, where true, we think true. it's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but apparently, this game is now the most pre-ordered game in Nintendo history. Yep, that's crazy. Like ever, uh, think about all of the games they've released. Right. But this is the most pre-ordered game. <laughs> you gotta remember. Think of the previous Pokemon games. Yeah. And this, like, hype for this game must be just way up. And see, I haven't played the demo yet, so I don't, my hype's not there with everyone. Right. But that's the thing. Like, everyone else's hype is making me think, okay, I gotta try it. Mm-hmm. At least try it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and Pokemon's huge now with, with Go. Go, oh, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. But it, it's... Man, the highest pre-ordered game. And remember, the 3DS is technically the lowest selling Nintendo handheld of all time. Yeah, it is. Like, it, yeah. granted, it doesn't have. There's not as many you know, like console or handheld generations as, as cause there's Game Boy, and you can kind of lump Game Boy Color into that. Yeah. Um, and then Game Boy Advance, that was yep. the next generation of that. Yep. And then it went mm-hmm. from that to DS. Yeah, the, the SP too. With the SP was part of Game Boy Advance, right? Yeah, yeah. it was just a back of the screen. Yeah. It's kind of like like yeah. Game Boy Color. It's all yeah. part of the same right. like, yeah, yeah, same yeah. games. Yeah, for the most part. I know Color. You had some exclusive Color games, right. but yeah. uh, anyway, so it was. Game, Game Boy and Game Boy Color, that was Generation 1. That was like 80 million or something. Then you had Game Boy Advance and the uh, Advance SP or whatever and all this stuff. That yep. that was around 80 million again. Then you had the Nintendo DS. That was 150 million. Wow. And now you have this was just 60 million, which is a 3DS. Now, that's not bad. I mean, yeah, no, no. That's Game still... Boy is around 80. So, like, it, it's not terrible. It's just, it is technically the lowest sign. So, it almost yeah. surprises me that this is the console that yeah, has the highest the pre-order, pre-order for yeah. something. I would say, how much does Pokemon Go have to do with that? Um, so did you guys pre-order? Like, you guys out there, did you guys pre-order this game? Um, tell us why we should try out the demos. We're going to. Yeah. It's going to happen. Like, yeah. I might even download mine right when we're done with this recording. Um, I'm going to have to wait to get it until I get home because I don't yeah. have a DS with me. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. Like, I'm going to download I'm going to at least give it a try and see what it's all about. Um, man, do you think this could be what gets us back into Pokemon? Because I've been yeah. waiting. Like, I never wanted to get out of Pokemon. It just, the game started stopping, stopped interesting me. For some reason. I, yeah. I don't even know why. I Again, I think it goes back to kind of a nostalgia thing. Where it, in a way for me, there's almost too many Pokemon now. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, I've heard the one saying where it's, you know, they, they have to pretty much change the gotta catch them all to catch a few and then you get bored and give up. Because there's <laughs> so many Pokemon out there now. We could argue that offers more playability to it. It, it does. But like catching it, the original 150, really, it felt hard at the time. But now when you go back and play those games, it's really not that difficult. Oh, no, I know. 
I, I definitely know that. <laughs> but um, you, you know what I'm you know what I'm saying though. Pokemon Go is a lot harder to do. Than yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, just being able to just just too many Pokemon. At least for me, I understand that you have to bring in new generations. You have to bring in. I think. I think new the, ideas. My my um. I'm with you on the too many Pokemon because they're like they literally for a long time dropped the got him catch 'em all phrase. Yeah, and I think that's around the time I stopped being interested because to me that's what Pokemon was. Yeah, the point of playing Pokemon wasn't about beating the Elite Four. Yeah. and becoming champion. Everyone can do that. Yeah, who cares right? about yeah. that? I mean, yeah, I'm going to do it, but yeah. like that's just what you do in the course of playing the game. I care about completing that Pokedex. Well, yep. what happens at the very beginning of those first games? Professor Oak asks you to help him complete the Pokedex. Yeah. That's the point of the game. Right, yeah. Along the way, you end up getting you know badges and all, and that's great. That That's awesome. That adds a sense of progression to the yep. game. Yep. But that Pokedex completion, you felt like you really didn't beat the game until you completed that Pokedex. Yes, and I was so close. And Even I, if you oh, don't I own, could... technically you don't have to own all the Pokemon to complete the Pokedex. But... I know I, I was Kabuto and Kabutops away from having... All 151. Yeah. Because I had Mew. Yeah. Oh, nice. But I now have no clue where my Original games are. Yeah. 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 And so I, I think what happened was is somehow it got left in the back of my mom's van and ended up getting donated. So if there's anybody out there who has my games, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's... I'm with you on the Pokemon. I, I, I don't... I'm not mad they added Pokemon. Right. Like, I was okay so with Pokemon it. Silver and Gold. Like, they added more Pokemon. It's okay. I understand. But I think what happened was the volume at which they were adding Pokemon. It uh, felt like there was a generation where they added, like, 300 Pokemon. Yeah. And I'm just like... Why? Well, okay, that's... No. Yeah. You just... And, and, and even... Your... even I mean, there's all these memes out there that are memes. Sorry. Yes, memes. That, <laughs> that go through and they're like... They're, they're they're literally making fun of some of the naming conventions for these Pokemon because it's like well, oh they ran out of ideas yeah, oh right. we grabbed oh yeah. hey here's Pop Bottle Man yeah right yeah. Pokemon number eight hundred and seventy two right like yeah. like it felt like they were running out of ideas and I think that's partially what has people excited about this game is that instead of I mean they're creating new Pokemon but instead of like relying solely on like oh here's two hundred new Pokemon they're taking older Pokemon and making those Pokemon fresh again with new evolutions. And oh, okay. And it's kind of like... Yeah, and it's kind of yeah. like... They're, they're called Alolan forms or something. Okay. Form. Yeah. Um, and, and it's kind of like... Okay. That makes a lot more sense to me than what they've been doing. Um, so, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see. That That is a big reason I think I fell out. Um, you know, I want to say repetitiveness, but then I've been playing Madden every single game. So, I mean, <laughs> let's just true. be real. Like, repetitiveness yeah, isn't why I stopped. Uh, There's true. something else that really made me not want to play anymore, and, and that might just be it. Maybe it's just too many Pokemon too fast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, and eventually, like, even in the TV series, eventually they dropped Ash out of the TV series. <laughs> and, it, and and I was like... Okay, now I don't care about the TV series anymore. Right, exactly. I watched it because of Ash Ketchum, and then right. there's no... Now, I know they have, like, a new Pokemon series out now that brings Ash back, and apparently it's, it, it doesn't look that half bad. Apparently, I haven't seen any episodes. I don't even know if any episodes are out yet uh, for the new one, but uh, you know, it, it, it's the first time I've been interested in possibly checking out Pokemon, the TV series, in a long time. Um so, yeah, well, who knows? Maybe I'm about to become a Pokemon fanatic again. Yeah. I mean, I, I work at elementary school part-time. Kids there are rocking Pokemon cards and always wanting to talk to me about it. And I'm so out of touch. And that mm-hmm. was my childhood. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of want it to come back around again. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why I liked Pokemon Go. For all of the things it doesn't have, finally I can catch the original 150 out yeah. in the wild. Yeah. It's just an awesome idea that I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. Yeah, great. Um, so I, I'm just excited. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looks like we're already at 738, if not more, yeah. for Pokemon. Yeah. It's uh, and, and, and and you know it, and that's another thing with this game is I'm I hope it has all the Pokemon in the games between the two versions. I just hope that um, it introduces you into the into them in this world kind of naturally instead of flooding you with them. Yeah. Um, because it, it's a lot of Pokemon, but there is a way. There's got to be a way you can, like, gameplay wise, kind of bring them in, kind of like the original games, yeah. where you don't feel like you're just, oh, I got to keep walking on this grass because there's 72 different type of Pokemon in this, in grass. this grass. Yeah, I, I like the idea of the, like the in the original series that the, the like the game reserve that was pretty cool. Yeah, that where you get a certain amount of time to run around and catch, you know, 
10 different types of Pokemon or how many ever it was mm -hmm. in, the, in the game reserve. Yeah. That was that was cool. I mean, yeah. add a couple of those in there. Yeah. Add some different ways of running around. Hey, there's like 10, 15 here. 10, and, I, 15 and I love how over time, like, back in the day, what was it? For, for I'm talking about for like Pokeballs. There was like the original Pokeball, which is still yep. around. Still yep. Master Ball. That, that was like, that was I the, think that was the, the top. Yep. Wasn't there one yep. in between? Great. And, the Great uh, Ball. Great Ball. And there was... Ultra? Yep, Ultra. Yep. Okay, I think last time I, I I was I was reading an article about Pokeballs, there was something like twenty of them. I'm like, what's the point of a Pokeball to catch a fucking Pokemon? Yeah, I'm sorry for swearing. Yeah, it's like right. the first real swear word I said on the show. Right. Yeah. Like ridiculous. You didn't need to add more Pokeballs. I'm sorry. It just did not need to happen. There was the original Pokeballs were just fine. Like you don't. Oh, we're in a new land, so we need. No, you don't. Yeah. Right. Use the same technology. We have the technology. Yeah, right. Um, so that was kind of one of the last big topics I want to talk about. Do you have any, uh, anything else you want to talk about this week? Uh, I I kind of do. Um, What's that? I'm not sure. Is it what you've been staring at? Yeah, yeah. The uh, Lego Dimensions. Uh, Lego Dimensions. Yeah. See, he he brought it up, folks. I'm, I'm just kidding. Lego games are actually pretty fantastic. Yeah. So I there's a few of them that I, are a little bit interesting, but. <laughs> But, uh, those Batman ones took off for like crazy. Yeah, which is weird because those are the ones I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> Have you? Oh, you haven't because you don't own the Wii U. Lego City. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you can get undercover Lego City undercover for 3ds. That yeah. version exists, but oh, nice. Um, but I just was scrolling through a night. Two of my favorite characters from one of the greatest movies ever made are is now are now being added to it. Uh, Gizmo and Stripe from Gremlins. I only remember Gizmo, so yeah, that's all. Stripe, I Stripe is the leader from the of the actual like yeah, the yeah. I, bad it's been Gremlins. So long yeah. since I've seen Gremlins. Right. Oh, fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, just looking through, and I, I know I'll, I like most of the the uh, the Lego games. Yeah. Um, just looking through some of these packs that they have, I, I, I see like the, the Doctor Who one. <laughs> you can scroll down here. They got. Uh, is Slimer Fun Pack the the Cybermen, that's freaking awesome. The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, <laughs> Ghostbusters. Just, yeah, just so many different things. <laughs> they have Krusty from The Simpsons. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, but it just seems like an interesting game. I, I've never. It's I'm guessing it's, Bart Simpson. Yeah, it's oh yeah, of course you got to have uh, Emmett from yeah, movie. Emmett from yeah the Lego Movie. But just some of the. The packs they have here it looks like it's an interesting game, and I probably should go end up yeah. trying to pick yeah, like, up like, and stuff like that. But. This kind of game is kind of like the Skylanders, yeah. Um, kind of like I, in that um, the Disney Infinity, which really sucks for Disney fans because they're it's like they're done. There's yeah. no more Disney Infinity. Right, yeah. Like Brandon Jones, I'm really sorry. He's a guy from Easy Allies. He owns like every single Disney Infinity character. He loves Disney. Yeah, Infinity, well, hardcore. I, hey. um, he's a big Disney guy. He goes to lots of theme parks, and it's like, oh, they're done. Like, yeah. Yeah, like I was literally thinking about getting into it because my kids love Disney stuff, right, and they have yeah. Elsa, and they have, like all these awesome. Yeah. Like I can get my, and now you're done, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the, I remember the original Disney Infinity became free at one point on the Wii U, and like so we were gonna play it. And yeah, just... I mean the only thing that kind of bugs me about these games is like if well they exist they, they exist the... to sell the toys. Oh yeah, definitely because the toys are where they make a ton right. of money. Right, but if you end up losing it. You have to go buy another one. Well, of course. Where you can't lose a character, well, lose a character unless your file gets corrupt on an actual game. You know what I'm talking. You know what I'm talking about. Where you don't have to have the physical character to play the character in the game. Well, sure. <laughs> your system breaks. Oh, right. But, yeah, <laughs> no, or I said no, your file gets corrupt. Yeah. But my yeah. amiibo, it's yeah. gone. No more Charizard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You end up. Which, by the way, Nintendo, where's your see these? You have these Amiibo. You sold over 10 million, probably 13 million of these bad boys by now. Where's your Amiibo party festival yeah. game thing? Ooh. I mean, I know you okay. have like the Animal Crossing thing, but like where is Bring your yeah, toy like box for these things, man? Amiibo party. Make it like a Mario Party game, but with your characters that you can actually That's play. It. Exactly. Nintendo. Yeah, there you ideas. Go. Come on. Ideas. Call us. Well, well, we'll Amiibo, up, Amiibo we'll... Stadium, so oh, Pokemon Stadium. There you go. You can kind yeah. of make it like a, a Smash Bros. Pokemon crossover, and yeah. everything's... 
There's ideas out here. Oh, Nintendo. 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 You know, burning <laughs> money. Um, no, seriously, the Lego Dimensions does look really cool. I love Legos. I still play with Legos oh, today. Yeah. So do I. And that's, that's well, another thing that, again, nostalgia. <laughs> it's not even nostalgia. No, I still no, but, play it yeah, today. This is right. but, awesome. Yeah. I go out and I'm like, I know this thing's like $200, but I really want it. <laughs> yeah, right? Really yeah. Want, I really want the Death Star. It just yeah. needs to happen. Oh. It needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, I need the big cruiser. I, oh, yeah. I need that whole Star Wars set. I need yeah. everything. Um, I just I, I just love and, and like a lot of the big attraction for Lego is not just the building it's the fact that they usually get a lot of the big IP yeah so you get your Halo even Halo has Legos um, you got your Star Wars your Simpsons I mean look at all these different yeah. all these different series kind of come together and Lego Dimensions really brings them all together into a game yeah the only thing that I, I see right here come on Lego or your, Mission your, Impossible your, your Mission Impossible guy looks like looks like Harry Potter Come on! The hair, especially. The hair, yeah, the hair especially. The yeah. hair especially. It looks like Harry Potter. I mean... I mean, they reuse yeah. things, though. So. I know, I, I get it, but it, it, it looks... And by so the way, like Nintendo, Potter. like, hint, hint, you need to team up and give an IP license to LEGO. Forget Connects, which I know is why you don't do it, because you, you have an IP license with Connects. Nobody cares about Connects, man. Yeah. LEGO. LEGO is the way to go. IP them. Like, I know you have some really cool, like, Mario Connect stuff, but I don't care. You can keep that. I'm sure there, there can't be like something blocking you from Lego. Come on, man. Make it happen. Make it happen. My dream will be complete if I could build my own actual Nintendo land out of Lego. Oh, right. Yeah. And have it be official so like I don't have to like make up my own little paint have, jobs on the guys. Yeah. Like, this is Mario. Yeah, right. But it's yeah. paint and you yeah. scratch it and it comes off. Right. Um, yeah. Lego Dimensions. Yep. Again. Something right. I never thought we'd talk about, but man, I love Lego. Yeah, right? I love Lego. I actually... Kind of looking at this. And well, well, what's it, what system is it? What system is that? Uh, no, it's, it's got, on Wii U. Yep, it's got the Wii U 360, the Xbox That's One, one PS3, PS3, and 4. Yeah. So. Probably going to be on Switch as well. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Probably will be on Switch. So, um, yeah, that's... I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. If, if anyone out there would like to send me some Lego, I don't really have much money right now. But anyone wants yeah. to send me, like, I'm still waiting on my <laughs> my GameFly rental of NBA 2K17 because I really want to play it. Yeah, but I already have GameFly, so I'm like, send it to me because I don't have the money to buy it. And they're yeah. like, oh, it's low stock. I'm like, eh. so I, I'm just like, <laughs> it's low stock. That doesn't mean it's no stock. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's low stock. Low stock. No stock. You didn't say out of stock. Yeah, so exactly. why haven't you sent it yet? Yeah. You cancel my GameFly membership if I don't get it this month. Or by the end of next month. I'll give I'll give you one more month. Um, yeah, I guess that, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this week's podcast. By the way, I did check the results on our thing, our bet from two weeks ago. Okay. I did win. Okay. Yeah. It didn't change. I'm still up by one vote. So what, one vote? you, I know, I know. So you and Darren um, have to recite a 10 second poem about how awesome I am. This would be sweet. Um, <laughs> inflate, inflate the eagle even more. Worse. <laughs> um, so uh, whenever the next podcast is, when we get Darren around, we'll we'll kind of get that. We'll kind of get that recital in there. But now you know, you know even before Darren does. So yeah, you got a week, at least a week here to try to get that that together. I mean, yeah. do it now if you really want yeah. on the fly. But <laughs> this, I, this, I want this, this to be good. This, this, this poem is called "Nate is Great." <laughs> Nate is great. Nate, Nate is great. It's gonna be ten seconds long. So you just go hold your hands up for that thing. It is great. That's not that's not a poem. That's that's a pose for ten hey, seconds. Hey, hey, I'm going off the uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. This <laughs> song is called "So Sad, So Very Very Sad," and then it's just so sad, and it's done. I'm going off of that. So, <laughs> all right, we'll see what happens when the actual time comes up, or maybe you just got a preview of the full event. I have no. This bet's gonna backfire in my face somehow. <laughs> Somehow, or someone's going to find a way to say positive things about me that I actually don't want to be about me. Oh, it's going to happen. I have so it's much gonna, dirt on this. Game. Anyways, but again, it's got. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, this is going to backfire. So, especially for him, Darren. I don't know, Darren. Might just be, Nate is great. He's a nice guy. Yep. Isn't he so fly? I can't believe I just said that. Nate is great. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Word. <laughs> Word to you, mother. Right. Uh, so we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Nintendo Prime podcast. Um, next week I might have a little bit of an announcement with Nintendo Prime. It's kind of a big deal. Um, but we'll see. Still working out the final, final details. <laughs> have a good week. Peace out. Peace out, A-Town. <laughs> A-Town. <laughs> 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 <laughs>